Welcome everyone into a look at my personal library, a collection of books filled with cursed compendiums, motivational monstrous manuscripts, and bizarre bestiaries. Yes, whether you're looking for whether you're looking for inspiration or simply want to know if that book you're eyeing up is right for you or not, well, you've come to the right place as we're not necessarily going to be reviewing books here, but we're going to be talking about what's inside them, what topics you can expect to find, how each chapter and section of the book is laid out, and a few of my own personal observations sprinkled into the middle. So, stick with me and we'll take a look at our first book for this series, Cursed Objects. Strange but true stories of the world's most infamous items by J.W. Ocker, I believe that's pronounced. Now, I've taken a look at J.W. Ocker's other works and he's got a fair selection of written material out there. Anything from the cursed objects you see here to the town of Salem and its witch uh, culture. And he also has a very interesting blog about the odd and strange things he's seen when he's been travelling around the United States and other places. So, I think he's got quite the experience there. So, what about this one? Well, let's find out. Now, Cursed Objects is mostly what it says on the tin. It's just a rundown of various cursed objects you can expect to find around the world. It consists of the object, it's the name of the object, where it originated from, the potential years, the number of victims or owners it may have had, and where it currently is. You'll get a rundown of its history, the story that makes it so interesting, and a little image on the inside to give you an illustration of what the cursed object actually looks like. Now, what I particularly like about this book is how it's laid out. So, you go in and it does start with, I haven't mentioned this actually because this is one of my favourite parts, uh, the book itself starts with a little curse. To steal this book if you should try, it's by the throat of your hung high, and Raven's then will gather back to find your eyes and pull them out, and when you're screaming oh oh oh, remember you deserved this woe. Each book is cursed, so just by owning the book, you too own a cursed object in essence. And I imagine that's your thing if you're buying this. But, back to the book itself, as I was saying, the book is separated into various chapters, such as Cursed Under Glass, Cursed in the Graveyard, Cursed in the Attic, Cursed in Stone, The Business of Cursed Objects, so that's a little bit different, that's not necessarily about the objects themselves, but the kind of people you'd, you'd open them, or the businesses should we say. Why aren't these objects cursed? Objects you'd expect to be cursed but aren't. And the curse in the machine about more modern cursed objects. And then each chapter is broken down into individual items featuring the information I stated a few moments ago. So you get a couple pages about the object and then you move on directly into the next object. Easily listed, easily identified, easily found through the index in the back. Now, as I said, each cursed object only contains a few pages worth of information about it, probably about three to five on each. But if you just want a few good stories and some inspiration, I think this is your book, Any Cursed Object. You could find more information about it on the internet, but if you wanted to find out just about cursed objects in general without knowing anything beforehand, here you go, a compendium. So the book is of just over 250 pages long and contains 53 separate entries of the cursed objects, which I think is a fantastic amount. Not enough to keep you going, depending on how avid a reader you are. It's something you can sit down and read one or two entries a day like I did to get through it and have it last you a while. Or you could speed read the whole thing, get it done very quickly. 
Exactly, if that's your sort of thing. But I thoroughly enjoyed reading this. It was exactly what I wanted. Straight to the point, nothing but the facts. Easily identified, unlike some of the books I was reading before this. You finish reading about one first object, and then you click the page, and you start the next page in big, bold heading. You get the title of the next first object. Easy, simple, no fuss. So, I hope this has inspired you to maybe pick up a book of your own, or continue reading one you've already got. And if you've got any comments or suggestions for other books I should add to my own library, please let me know in the comments. Or if you enjoyed this, just give me that thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and do come back next time to check out another book with me. Ta-ta for now.